The following is an EHC Media Production. Hey guys, welcome to 1XT. Your host, Brian Green, here for episode number nine, bringing you your weekly who, what, when, where, why, what's going on, do I put it on on warm wash, what is the customer service number for Dell, and oh God, are the holidays over because I'm sick of retail. Uh, I am here with a um, magnificent host from the RWT family, uh, Moses Marquez. How are you, my friend? I'm doing great. How about yourself, brother? Oh, I'm hanging on by by, by hairs at this point. <laughs> hanging on, man. Um, yeah, but, the holidays were rough, to say the least. Oh, ab- absolutely. They're, they're still here. Um, I don't know <laughs> what it is about the holidays that just kind of makes people lose it. And some fuses kind of go haywire, but it, it's, it's... Oh, a, that is for sure. <laughs> it's, it's a mad town out there. But uh, <laughs> thanks for um, coming on to uh, agree to be on this episode of uh, WinXT for me, man. Hey, man, I appreciate the invite. Yeah, anytime, anytime. Um, so I haven't quite watched SmackDown yet, but um, I don't know what's going on. I, I think I saw like the first half hour, but you being on, on WinXT, you're already making big changes here because I had to include the Street Profits theme at the beginning of the show. Uh, and you main roster folks, once you get your grubby hands on NXT, you always switch it up a little bit. So I'm just, just kidding. Uh, they're, gonna be, they're gonna be changed a lot, let's just say that. I mean, if they're smart, they'll leave them alone. But I mean, how often is the WWE smart when moving guys from NXT to the main? Yeah. Um, very low success rate there, and uh, oh boy, we'll talk about some of the some of the stars that come up as we go into this episode here. But uh, we had a lot of cool things happen on this episode. Just gonna jump quickly into the episode. Um, first thing we're talking about here, the Street Profits. Actually, they had their first segment on this week's episode, and I totally agree with Nigel. He does not have to agree with Percy's opinion of this team being. <laughs> swaggy and and great you know Maro says that they sip on swag juice out of their solo cups but percy loves the team because they they came from nothing and they're here and they're celebrating and having a good time uh what's your opinion on the street profits i actually like them yeah um i think i mean angelo Dawkins, he's been around for a while uh, and i mean a while um it's finally i'm glad to see that he's finally getting something underneath and Montel, uh, Montez Ford has, like, charisma for, like, three tag teams. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, he's over the top, and he's pretty athletic. So, I mean, it looks like he's relatively new into the sport. Um, I think he was, like, a football player prior, or even, like, a uh, track and field guy. But, I mean, I like him. Uh, I think they're going to be in NXT for a little bit, and they might have a title reign sometime next year. Oh, yeah, I, I wouldn't doubt that. Uh, they kind of spoke on that at the end of their match here um you know uh they they fought some jobbers i didn't quite get their names i think it was star and an apex um they noted one of them looked like like that yeah one of the guy on the apron looked like jbl they kept pointing that out (laughs) (laughs) he really did though (laughs) um but uh montez ford's agility was incredible uh he front flipped over one of these guys and uh angela dawkins went ahead and took him hit a backdrop into like an assistant moonsault. That was a phenomenal move. And this was a short match. They hit their greatest hits, you know, their, their uh, 360 clothesline spots, uh, Dawkins mm-hmm. with that maneuver, the spine buster. And then Montez Ford hit one of the most beautiful frog splashes I've ever seen. Dude, he gets ever do. up there. Jeez. Like, he gets some height on that, on that frog splash. Serious hang time. So serious, uh, just serious athleticism and talent, and um, hey, it, it's working for them, man. They uh, the gimmick is awesome. They they took an easy victory here over these uh these no names, and they went ahead and and partied in the crowd with the uh, <laughs> the NXT universe. What what do you think about the showcase for the Street Profits? What better way to get them over? I mean, they're they're the uh, you know what I mean. They're the uh, 
the, the the people's champ, if you will. I don't know, I'm probably getting way ahead of myself on that one, but I mean, they're, they're a total fan favorite. They went from being like this random team to being funny, and being funny has got them over, and now they're showing up that they can actually be a tag team. I want to see them take on real competition, um, but I mean, this is, you know, a good start to getting them over. So, uh, yeah, you uh, speak for both of us here when you say that um, this match was, was great. Um, I don't think I did an episode this particular week, a few episodes back, but they had a match against Tino Sabatelli and Riddick Moss. And in this match, for some reason, I don't know if it was the fact that they were fighting Tino Sabatelli and Moss, who have had great matches on their own in the, in the past, but it was just punches and... It was just really boring. I felt like they gave, they gave Tino and Moss control of the match, and they just totally dropped the ball because they were trying to be so offy, pretty boys, just kind of look at us. We're, we're beating these guys up, and, and I think they won that match, and the crowd was just not into it. These guys were just yeah. having fun, and the crowd is way into it. So, yeah, title run in the future. Uh, they, they jumped on the mic here. They said that, my brothers and sisters, in 2017, we, we came, we saw... And we're going to conquer. I couldn't really understand what they were saying at this point. I think they were a little too hyped. And I, I don't know what they were make, They were saying on the mic here. Um, they said that the AOP had cool vests. Um, sanity was throwing rooftop parties. Uh, I don't know what they were saying. But they're going for the tag titles in 2018. Let's just uh, leave it at that. <laughs> but, um, uh, it definitely looks like it's in their future. Yeah, who 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 other else in the uh, NXT universe right now? Um, I mean, we had the AOP kind of give a vignette backstage, and I don't want to see them stick around in NXT. Um, they're they're great, they're they're wonderful, big guys. But Oldman Ellering did cut a, a backstage promo, not not a bad promo at all. But it marks them staying in NXT a little bit longer, which is what I don't want them. To do. I'm gonna, I don't mean to oh. jump in front of you, but no, I, mean, I don't. I feel the same way. They need to go to the main already, but I don't know. I think, like, because I mean, what what more are they gonna do? Are they gonna they're gonna challenge, um, you know, uh, Red Dragon, and then if they lose, then what? I think if anything, they'll they'll be smart. They'll tape that match, which will probably be actually they'll probably have that match at Takeover. And then after that, they'll probably, hopefully the next night, they'll show up on Raw. If they're smart, because I know Vince really likes them. And, like, a push for them has been imminent for a while. I've heard it was AOP is ready to go, um, and Cassie is Ono. But... Oh, I didn't hear that about Ono. Yeah, I heard that uh, Triple H was pushing to have him go to the SmackDown. That he would be a good addition to the mid-card. You know, another another guy. But I, I I don't know. I would hope he didn't just, like, turn into, like, a boy Apollo Cruises on Raw. You know what I mean? Oh. Ty Dillinger was that guy that went up, and then he kind of just, he's, like, squandered. He just had, um, I, I just talked about it on SmackDown. Um, Ty Dillinger was, like, the random other name guy in the U.S. title tournament and lost to Jinder Mahal. So oh, That's a bummer. Yeah, it's like like how you how we said in the beginning, their success rate is up and down. Yeah, with these call ups. <laughs> I was a bit um, curious as to where Ty Dillinger even was, um, <laughs> even if the AOP, like you're saying, do get called up, they're they're in the hands of some questionable decision makers. Um, oh yeah. So um, as far as the other tag teams in NXT. I don't really know if anyone else is ready for a call-up, but they, they broke up DIY. Um, they have Sanity, which I, I see sticking around for a little bit longer. They, they can throw them back in there with the Undisputed Era and have a great match. Matter of fact, yeah, in two weeks, true. they do have their um, Tag Team Championship rematch. I think that should be a, a pretty good one. I don't think they should disappoint in that one. Um, but to move on further in tonight's episode, we have the NXT Women's Championship match. Sonya Deville and Ember Moon, and the fact that they keep having Sonya come down to do NXT tapings is a little confusing to me. I don't know what the 
plan is for her getting bounced back between Florida and all over the world. I think my whole thing is they think that she's a name just because she's on Raw. And so they're like, oh, okay, well, you know, Ember just beat somebody who's on Raw. Okay, well, that just made her look weak. And she's supposed to look strong with this new faction. What's like, yeah, like how you're right. Like, what was the point of having her on the show? Yeah, they, it's, at first I thought it just had to do with the taping schedule. Like, maybe they just need to burn off some of these old matches. But no, she's cutting promos talking about what she's doing on Raw. And it's obviously brand new footage. Uh, the commentators are speaking about it. So um, it just seems a little odd. And to talk about what's going on on Monday Night Raw, I feel so bad for these wrestlers who got flown out um, like a seemingly successful competitor in NXT, Apollo Crews. He got flown out on Christmas Day to stand next to Dana Brooke and Titus O'Neil as they got handed a DVD. Didn't even get a match. You got to be home for Christmas, honey? No, I need to go stand next to a guy who's going to be handed a DVD on camera. Exactly. (laughs) I need to go do this 30-second spot. I'll be gone for two days. (laughs) Like, what is the point? Oh, my gosh. But what is wrong with the idea of Apollo being a good wrestler? He was great on the indie scene. He wasn't... I think he should have stayed in NXT longer. I think that was my whole thing. I think he came up way too soon. He should have had, like, a main title run. Like, not an actual title run. Like, a main event run in NXT. And then go to, like, SmackDown. The problem is they keep putting these guys on Raw. And all Raw does is they focus on, like, eight or nine guys. And everybody else is pointless. Yeah. It's like, so then what's the point of getting anybody else over? Yeah, um total rush job on that guy and um sonia uh they're still having matches with her here on nxt so that kind of speaks to their faith in her a little bit in my opinion but uh ember i don't know what happened to her in this match she kind of looked toward the hell up to me uh just purple messy hair green and black attire you know red boots like i don't she got dressed in the dark or something today i, I don't know i said yeah something like that she <laughs> definitely did not look uh i guess as we expect him to? I don't know. She always looks she, good. She, she looked like she legit just got done grappling in the back and they went to the ring. <laughs> this is the spot. Okay, let's just go do it right now. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, the match started out with, you know, some standing switches, uh, immediate ankle lock that Sonya went for on Ember. Uh, arm drag into a kip-up looked impressive from Ember countering that. Another go behind, exchanging some roundhouses that missed. Uh, they actually came to a nice standstill that you know got a little applause from the audience. They tried to fake out each other with some strikes, and you know it looked good for a second. Yeah, for a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Sonia uh, tried to uh, show her uh, you know healer's ways. She went for a test of strength, uh, faked out Ember, you know punched her. Uh, Ember came back, took her out with a single leg drop kick and a, a rolling senton out on the outside as Sonya took a powder. Um, and one thing that is just so magical about WWE programming is that one person who is in control before they go to commercial break, that person is going to be on the defense when they come back they're, from commercial break. They're immediately, on the, on the, they're immediately trying to fight back. It's like, wait a minute. Like, is this the, like, you're indicating, and it's always a high spot, too. Yeah. It's always like a tope or, you know, something crazy. It's like, oh, we're going to break. Okay. And then you come back, and it's like, well, didn't they just hit a big tope a second ago? And now, all of a sudden, like, we're in a random chin lock, and she's getting her butt kicked? What the hell is going on? <laughs> well, that, that bug has even bitten the style of match down here in uh, NXT. And um, that's one thing that I, I think... Um, when I try to look for the differences and the pace of matches between the NXT roster and the main roster, it's it, it's just that, the, the pacing of matches. They kind of do different mannerisms in the matches, but it seems like these little in-match cliches and, and, and spots and just production things that happen are bleeding into the NXT production, which, which sucks. Um, yeah. So... Um, uh, getting down to the end of the match here, uh, Ember reversed a, a waist lock hole that Sonya had on her. It was like a victory roll. It sent DeVille face first into the middle turnbuckle. 
Uh, Deville was, she showed that she was a little green in this match to me. She was a little sluggish. She would throw moves, like she would throw a punch, but the punch was so slow that it was obviously meant to be countered or caught by Ember. She was just telegraphing too much, just kind of lost me there. Yeah, she yeah. definitely showed her, yeah, you're right, her green side, that's for sure. Yeah, uh, I just kind of took me out of it as we came down to the ending here, and I was kind of, you know, I never would chant boring at an event, but in my mind, it was getting to that point. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you, yeah, I'm glad we thought the same. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, Ember could put on a good match, but it got slow, and it got boring, and you're right, it's like, it's, it looked like Sonya was starting to go at like 60%. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah. You know that you're in a match right now. Like, let's go. Let's pick it up. This Sonya. is how you learn. <laughs> yeah, um, she just kind of lost it. Luckily, they went home quick, and it was a good showcase for Ember. You know, um, Sonya did the best she could. Um, hopefully, this little side experiment of hers is, is done. And moving onward with the Women's Championship picture, Kyrie Sane came out, pointed her telescope at uh, Ember, you know, kind of signifying that she wanted a next to the title and um i was just kind of all right kind of hokey i don't know why this is oh my god it's Shayna baszler <laughs> so uh, what'd you think about this uh, surprise debut uh any any uh, opinions was, at all i was legit caught by, by surprise did not think she would be showing up i thought you know if anything they would do one of those stupid debut matches and that's how she would show up this is a great way for her to show up definitely made her presence felt took off probably the next you know the what we who would be probably the number one contender so you know inserting herself into that i don't know maybe we see a triple threat yeah i wouldn't uh be mad at that at all no not really i mean it, it sounds like a good match and at the same time it would allow Shayna to do less which might help her yeah she's still learning <laughs> yeah um she had some great spots in the uh, Mae Young Classic. Um, I think they kind of just wanted to keep her silent, lock on a submission, do the bare minimum, and she did look a little winded. You know, her uh, selling ability was uh, questionable <laughs> at that point in the tournament. Questionable is definitely one of the words you can use. <laughs> um, hopefully she's gotten better um, in her absence on our television screens. But anything else uh, you got on, on, on these guys? I'm just happy to see Shayna. Wondering when Rowdy, Ronda's going to show up. <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I was going to ask, actually. Uh, because Baszler is down here in NXT, kind of getting debuted and spotlighted in this championship picture, so to speak. Do you see any hopes of a four horse women's match at WrestleMania? Personally, I've been saying yes. I'm saying that if they want to do it, it's definitely a money, a money move. But I'm hearing that they're canceling it. That the the idea is to have Ronda show up uh, during this rumble and probably winning. So, I mean, as much as a, as a fan, I would like to see it. I mean, because it, it sounds it sounds good. Because you would have, you know, two novice wrestlers who are just getting into the business and then two legit MMA fighters taking on probably four of the best women wrestlers in the business right now. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's it's a clash of styles. I think it would be definitely worth the watch. But, I don't know. It looks like it's not going to go down. Oh boy, that's, uh, that's uh, news to me. Um, yeah, they... <clears throat> You know, one minute it seems like they have Ronda in the bag. One minute it seems like they they don't. I don't know what. Oh no, Ronda is in the bag. Ronda is 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 on her way. That's for sure. Just the the whole horsewoman versus horsewoman idea is uh, not what they're thinking. So mm. we'll see. I mean, I know Ronda is pretty much a guarantee. She was training with Brian. I want to say Brian Kendrick and Natalia for a while. And oh, like nice. I said, rumor has it she's gonna be that big surprise entrant in the rubble. Nice. Oh, man. Um, I don't even know if uh, any word on it'll be um, a 20-woman rumble or a 30-woman rumble. Um, I feel like... Yeah, that's... I've legit heard nothing. Yeah. I would think it would be 30. would be a better better idea. 
And we could bring in a lot of legends for a one-time appearance and, you know what I mean, shock value. That's, that's I think, what's going to win the fans over with this Rumble is shock value. Yeah, they they got to do something different. First time ever they're going to put two on one show. So uh, <clears throat> looking forward to how they'll keep that fresh and hopefully they'll produce a great Rumble for these women the first time through. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, Baszler took out Sane with the rear naked choke as Ember looked on. Um, we moved on, and I already spoke about this AOP vignette that happened backstage, but at one point, Paul Ellering said that this is their house, they are the judge, the jury, the executioners, and the Undisputed Era is on borrow time. Why does everyone think that the wrestling ring is a house? <laughs> it's bothering me. Yeah, we basically, we got to lay down in it, you know what I mean? So, I guess <laughs> You worked so hard to build it, to build your career in the ring. I don't know. The house thing, it, it seems weird, and then it makes it even weirder when you got people calling themselves the big dog, <laughs> and it's their yard. It's like, what, what happened to it being a house? The house a yard? What the hell is going on? It's a ring. <laughs> it's a ring, people. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, uh, moving on, those guys. Um, uh, they move on to uh, kind of get into this Fatal 4-Way match. Uh, they review how Killing Dane just demolished Trent Seven in this match. Uh, Cassius Ono being beat by Johnny Gargano. Um, he should have gotten beat by Velveteen Dream, who is maybe seriously injured or storyline injured. But either way, not happy to hear that news. Yeah. Uh, Adam Cole against Aleister Black was great. You know, that Black Mask kick in the end was vicious. So well by Adam Cole and Roderick Strong versus Lars Sullivan. By God, if anyone has not watched that match, go check it out. Perfect, <laughs> perfect match. It was really, really good. Yeah, i a little disappointed Roderick Strong didn't move on here. I thought it was a little too soon to put Lars Sullivan in the spot. I don't know. I think I I think uh, I think Roderick Strong is going to get the Sami Zayn effect. He's going to lose so much, but put on these amazing matches along the way, and then he'll have his rise to fame. And, you know, maybe him versus Gargano at one point. That would be a crazy good match. Oh, yes, it would. Yeah, I'm a huge, huge Roddy fan. Um, and I really hope he gets a, a takeover match in Philly. But, um, oh, man. Um, give him something. Give him anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Dane came out looking scary as hell. I love that he has his own Celtic version of the Sanity theme. I think that's awesome. Um, Lars came out as well looking like a damn serial killer and they both looked like they wanted to eat Johnny Gargano on their way to the ring. No, they really did. <laughs> he, he looked like a, like, a, like a bowl of chicken wings to him. <laughs> what do you think of the um, ominous shadow and like the, the silhouette spot during um, you, Lars like, and I, This is, I think, like the first time I've like really seen it through. I think like normally like I see his, like I hear his entrance and I'm like, okay, I want to get a photo real quick or something. Yeah. This is the first time I've sat through this whole new ominous Channel, and I kind of really like it. Yeah. I do miss like the Lars Sullivan in like you know big fashion come on the on the screen, mm-hmm. but I mean this looks cool and scary. Yeah, I dig it. Um, they uh, have to get as creative as possible, just using lights and and video walls because they're robbing us of pyro, which was a part of my childhood. You bastards! <laughs> yes, something. Give me something. <laughs> Um, yeah, another thing um, about that, uh, lighting treatment, um, Ember Moon, I've always been a little confused as to what her actual persona is, like, are you a vampire, are you a, just gothy, do you dress, dress that way, do you need a new pair of jeans, I don't know, but, um, just, when she came out, she had the, the red light just kind of on her face, and like the, the Rey Mysterio-esque contacts, you know, I feel like her whole appeal could benefit from from something else her her appearance has always just kind of confused me it is she is a little confusing you're right like i never really knew what she was it's like are you like an alien do you come from the moon are you a <laughs> werewolf are you a vampire what the hell is going on here like you just need some eye drops i mean <laughs> i don't like she's a great wrestler don't get me wrong oh absolutely i just i, I don't understand the gimmick yeah it's a little beyond me um but a gimmick that uh, everyone does like um rounding out the competitors on their way to the ring is alistair black 
Um, every time I see this guy's entrance, it's just perfect. He just nails it, just looks serious. Oh man, I, they have something hot with this guy. If they keep him on the right path, don't, don't ruin him, don't put a mic in his hand, don't give him a Twitter account where he's booking your buzzword hashtags, you know, don't, don't ruin this guy, he's, he's a star. Yeah, a Twitter would kill this guy, it really would. <laughs> um, I, I forgot what, um, so one of the legends said it, he said, I don't want to live in a world where The Undertaker has a Twitter account, that's just, just wrong. <laughs> So, um, I forgot who said that. Yeah, but somebody said that. And you're like, yeah, makes perfect sense. I just, I just heard that. Um, anywho, uh, all hell broke loose as the match started, and Large just kind of tossed Gargano across the ring out of nowhere. Uh, <laughs> Alistair Black roundhouse uh, Killian Dane, and then Large was kind of forced to the outside by Alistair Black, who did that fake out dive into his black backflip uh, Indian seat. I love that move. Love it. Oh, yeah. It's a great move. <laughs> um, you know, nice quick action and a nice statement gave you a, a burst of what this match can be. And uh, Alistair Black went for a moonsault off the top rope to Lars on the outside, got thrown to the, the hardest part of the ring, you know. <laughs> um, surprise Morrow. It's all didn't have a, steel right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> surprise Morrow didn't have an aneurysm. He likes to, they like to always highlight that. Uh, Gargano suffered the same fate as he went for a dive, but Killian Dane could not get caught because this man took to the air and took Lars out on the outside. Um, Mamma Mia, good lord, that was a nice dive by Dane. I mean, he got some air and some distance for being a guy about 300 plus. And he didn't hit the ropes, like he didn't get caught up top or, or down low, just slid right through the middle, just like a giant stick of butter. <laughs> he's, he, yeah, he's really athletic for a big dude um yeah so that happened that beautiful sequence uh dane was taken out in the ring and Lars was kind of fighting alistair black and johnny gargano um up to the ramp near the uh video wall and by the commentators uh he knocks black off the stage and he gorilla presses johnny gargano throws him at alistair black uh he then cleared the table and these two smaller baby faces fought back, you know, teamed up, kicked him. He tried to powerbomb Gargano, and he held on to the set. That was a great escape from that. And uh, as these guys kick Lars onto the table, I he just came out of the left side of my screen. Dane did just ran off the stage and hit an elbow splash. That was a holy shit moment here in my household. Oh no, it, it was it was here too. Just to see Gargano like run for deer cover, like he <laughs> ran for cover, and all you see is this giant white hairball slam right into Sullivan. It looked so awesome. <laughs> it was good. It was real good spot. That had me shocked. Um, I, I think it cut open uh, Killian Dane on his arm. Like, these sanity guys just can't help but bust themselves up in these matches. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I mean, if it's not. If it's not Alexander Wolf bleeding like a pig all over the place at war games, Kelly and Dane's getting scraped up left and right. I, 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 geez, I feel so bad for Wolf. I hope he's okay. You know, obviously he didn't wrestle that tag title match last week or two weeks ago because he still has freaking staples in his head. Good lord. <laughs> but um, match you go one. hard in this business apparently. Yeah, I, I don't know how they do it. I always fantasize about. Being a wrestler one day, I have a I have a buddy who does it. Uh, wrestles by the name Kodo Hero out there. A few uh, promotions here in SoCal. Shout out to Kodo Hero. But that guy, you know, he's kind of a cruiserweight type of guy. Masters the ropes, does a lot of hurricane ranas and springboards and flips. And I'm like, dude, I I know you. How do you do that? Like, I, it's unbelievable. <laughs> like, just the risk these guys take. It's very garners a lot of respect from yours truly. Um, you know, these guys continue to go at it. Um, there was this point in the match where the two biggest guys become a non-factor. You know, they're taken out from that table spot and the crowd just erupted to see Alistair Black face off against Johnny Gargano, which would be a fantastic one-on-one -on -one match. Gotta see it later down the road. Oh, please. I mean, you got two, like, technically sound guys 
just give him 15 minutes and you have absolute gold. Yeah, if, shoot, I um, was going to say put him on the takeover match, but Gargano has a title match, but gosh darn it, they, I really hope they don't forget this this moment. It's, it just kind of reminds me of when when AJ and, and Shensuke kind of first faced off at the uh, Money in the Bank pay-per-view and you just saw the crowd realize what they have right in front of them, you know, at this NXT level. The crowd loves both of these guys and are very well aware of what fantastic matches these guys can put on. That That's a five-star match waiting to happen. So, uh, um, five, yeah, five for sure. I mean, if you've seen what they can do in Japan, I mean, they... Uh, and if they allow Nakamura to be Nakamura of NXT, they would put on easily the match of the year at WrestleMania, probably right into there. Yeah. And I, cause I say that because I do think Shinsuke is going to win the Rumble. I hope so. I, you know, um, what do you think about Kenny Omega coming out and talking about one of your fellow SmackDown superstars and saying he's done nothing compelling in a WWE ring? Do you uh, agree with that? Can... Um, Kenny tells it like it is, and mm-hmm. and I and I agree. I mean, Nakamura, he he came out of NXT red hot, and I mean red hot. He came out of NXT red hot, had the like immediate crowd attention. Was this over guy like nobody's business? He gets pushed into the into the title picture, and then gets continuously beat by Jinder Mahal, and then he's just like kind of thrown into the background. And then he was used a little bit in this whole thing. It's they're not doing what they should be doing with him. He should be a top guy. He should be a guy who probably had already had a title run. You yeah. know what I mean? He should have beat Jinder. If not, have him lose by DQ multiple times and don't kill him by losing clean. Like, or not clean, but you know, just like a DQ finish, a screwier finish. But you know, they made him look weak. Kenny's not wrong. I think Shinsuke peaked in NXT. But he is, I want to say, he is on the rebound. He is on the rebound. I don't think Kenny said that he was on the rebound, but I feel Nakamura's on the rebound. And between January to April, he's going to become that top star. He should be, because he's going to get all this notoriety from winning the Rumble. Yeah. um, Oh boy, you and so many other thousands of wrestling fans are clamoring for, for Shinsuke to win. And I really think he deserves that, that spot. Um, I haven't, you know, been following New Japan as I would like to. And um, hopefully you, you know, will give us some, um, some New Japan insight, you know, coming up towards the Wrestle Kingdom 12 show. You know, I'd love to see something produced from the page kind of given us who are a little unfamiliar you know like like a primer on you know the card or you know some of the, the matches or something like that well i'm actually glad that you that you bring that up i'm going to be bringing a a, a, a quick update and somewhat of an insight of the whole the entire card of wrestle kingdom 12 and that's coming up on the on january the 4th i'm basically going to go over the whole card you know, match by match by match, telling you, you know, what, you know, significant value they may have, you know, what's, you know, the motive behind them. For the people who aren't completely following it, for those, you know, that are into it because, you know, oh, well, Chris Jericho's, you know, made the statement, or maybe you're just a little more interested in New Japan because of guys like Shinsuke and AJ, you know. But I'm going to try to be that guy that, that bridges the gap. But, uh, I think Wrestle Kingdom 12 is going to be amazing. I think it, I think my favorite one so far, because I've been watching since Wrestle Kingdom 8, um, my favorite one has been 10, because there was the AJ Shinsuke Nakamura match. There was the uh, oh, wow. Kenny Okada match. You know, they were all really good. Uh, I'm sorry, and so it was a, uh, actually, it was a Nakamura, not Nakamura, it was um, Naito and Omega. That was a really good match, but... I think this one's going to be great. Chris and, Chris and Kenny are going to put on a show that's going to get everybody's attention, and then they're going to see how great of professional wrestlers Naito and Okada are in the main event. And I think it's going to be like a fun build-up to them. They always do like a rumble, or like it's like a 20-man rumble. It's supposed to be huh. like, it's supposed to make fun of the Royal Rumble, is what it is, <laughs> right? 
it ends up actually being somewhat good. They always bring back old stars, guys like Scott Norton and Billy Gunn and yeah, uh, Okay, yeah, I'm um I'm excited to check it out. I actually uh, took the day off work because uh, I want to watch it, you know, in its entirety live. Um, okay, I'm glad I'm not the only one that did that then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 re I requested it like four days, like four weeks ago. I was like, hey, can I get this day off? Why do you want the day in the middle of the week off? Don't worry about it. I have a thing I got to do. <laughs> I'm just having off. They're like, ah, uh, yeah, sure. It's vital to my living. You should want me to do it if I'm one of your employees you care about, okay? Like, come on. I'm about to say, because otherwise my plan is to come home and hopefully sleep for like three hours, get up, make dinner for the family, clean up the house a little bit, eat, sleep until about 12-ish, and then watch the whole thing and then power on through work the next day. Yeah. No, uh, it'll, it'll be worth be it, man. killer, so I'd rather not. It'll be worth it. Uh, Wrestle Kingdom coming up. Um, but also coming up, um, we have the uh, NXT TakeOver show. So to continue with the thread of where we uh, left it off with the uh, end of this match, just we left off with the just monstrosity of a mess that Dane and Lars left of the commentators area. Um, we had the face-off with Aleister Black and Johnny Gargano. Um, you know, they went at it for a little bit until Killian Dane came in and broke up, you know, a pinfall cover. I, I know, excuse me, I believe that. Alter Black was caught and the uh, Gargano escaped. Uh, Dane came in, hit his uh, senton splash, and then Dane just beat the hell up out of Johnny Gargano here. Just Samoan drop, splat, senton splat, power bomb, just, just, uh, just over and over again. This guy looked like a, a dummy. Um, you know, um, at one point, Alistair Black was up on the turnbuckle. Dane went to go fight him off. Got stuck up there with Aleister Black. Here comes Johnny Gargano and the baby faces take Dane down off the rope with a double power bomb. And this is when Lars began to stir with about five to seven minutes left in the show. Uh, stumbled towards the ring and just laid out the baby faces with just ham hocks of arms for these clotheslines. Oh man, I just want to see Killian Dane go on a tear. Um, I feel like. They maybe have used that Braun Strowman gimmick a little bit too recently, just kind of throwing jobbers in front of a person and just kind of having them, you know, beat the hell out of anyone. But uh, with the way that Lars speaks, I, I think in the past I've said that that can really set him out from these other monsters that are on the main roster, especially from Braun, because he looks so different from Braun. Um, I think he's a little shorter than Braun, I don't know, but this guy just looks. I want to say, say he's a lot short. I want to say Braun is like six eight. Yeah. And I want to say Lars is like six one. Yeah. <laughs> this guy just looks like a stretch Armstrong type of action figure, though. It's, he really does, though. It's just all he's just like he's just so big. Like here's the thing, like that kills me about it. Like he's big, right? Yeah. But like he's big in like an awkward way. Like, his legs look gigantic, but his chest looks bigger than the rest of him. It's, <laughs> and then he just has, like, this weird look on his face, and being bald, it's, yeah, he totally, he totally has the gimmick set. Oh, yeah, he, um, he knows who he's supposed to be playing. He, he has his character down. Great addition to the roster. He came out of nowhere. I, the whole, uh tag team gimmick they had with him he was destroying his partners after losing all of his match so he's not undefeated in in a way but you know the whole destroying his partner gimmick got over with the crowd people were just waiting to see him lose a match so he can just go ape shit um <laughs> wonderful um so it came to a point where lars and dane had their face off lars just kind of tossed gargano out of the ring like he's garbage um, this is where you can see the Dane was cut on his arm. Uh, Morrow questions their humanness, which I was too at this point. These two just <laughs> monsters. Um, and then here is where I saw Fear and Alistair Black's um, appearance, in my opinion, because he is, I think when they announce him, they do bill him at 205 pounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So just seeing him standing there between Dane 
and Lars just throwing as many kicks as hard as he can, as fast as he can. I really hope Vince McMahon doesn't get his sticky, grubby, money-hungry fingers on him and, and just say, oh, he's, he's 205 pounds, god damn it, let's have him face Enzo. I, I don't want that. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> I want to give you a little bit of relief. Um, I was listening, and I want to say they, they weighed him at 2.15. Oh, is it 2.15? Tonight. I want to say it was 2.15 tonight, but at the same time, um, back in his early, before he started to get this one-match gimmick push, where he'd have this awesome match with random people, he was uh, working the uh, the Raw House shows, and rumor had it he was going to be... Um, main uh, streamlined to uh, 205 yeah and i guess vince started to not like his gimmick and oh good instead he's now he's stuck <laughs> in nxt <laughs> i uh oh gosh I, I swear they were building billing the guy as as 205 maybe oh, no, 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 they were yeah they were billing him okay. as 205 but like i said i, I heard i was like 215 what good. happened to 205 <laughs> you put on some weight good. he had some um i don't know dark meat cheeseburger I don't know what someone his style would eat but put on some some WWE weight and you know whatever but um anyway the match ended here um Lars actually got hit with a black mask kick and I was a little weird at this the crowd usually pops huge for this kick and they, they seem a little distracted and the reason why is Undisputed Era Sons of Bitches came out Cost Alex to black the match, man. They um just distracted him, beat him up, he tried to get back in the ring. Adam Cole hit a brain buster over his knee, which essentially just kind of put him out for the rest of the match. Um Gargano dove outside to kind of, you know, pick up black, took out the undisputed era. He hit a hurricane rana onto Lars, which sent him into Dane, both kind of sandwiched up into the steps. And then he hit a beautiful a I that was just Taking care of business, just answering all the questions along the way to the finish. You know, how are we going to get rid of the Undisputed Era? Oh, Gargano took him out. Well, what about these two big men? Oh, they, Gargano took them both out, kind of. And then the finish. Perfect setup for this underdog babyface to get a huge victory after kind of being on a on a downslope. I think they're telling a great story with this guy. And such an emotional victory here to become the number one contender for... The NXT Championship, Johnny Gugano was. This was nicely done. Beautiful ending to a wonderful year for NXT. No, I completely agree. I mean, this was it was a really good match. The the finish totally came out of nowhere. I was like, there's no way he's gonna let, he's gonna win with this slingshot EDD, and he did. And I popped. My laptop almost fell out of my lap. I was like, holy crap, he actually won. <laughs> I thought if anything, he was gonna have to do like the spear or something and. You know, he, oh, he just can't get it. But no, they they gave him the push, and I cannot wait to see him in almost. Uh, I want to say is it uh, in Philadelphia? Yes. It's a little Rumble weekend. Yeah, Philly, right before the Rumble. January. Yeah, that's gonna be one good match. Oh man, yeah, I'm a I'm a huge fan of um, Andrade Almas, and um, Emir did ask me, you know, a few weeks ago for uh, one of the feedback questions, you know, if um, his title reign didn't matter, and when he has this match with Johnny Gargano, um, it's definitely gonna matter. Uh, this is gonna be a, a great match. I don't see Gargano walking away with the championship just yet. I honestly do see Tommaso coming back if he is cleared. If if he's cleared enough to just do a run in to just push him off the top rope, I think they would definitely kind of be dropping the ball if they missed an opportunity to capitalize on a spot like that. No, I, I completely agree. I was actually just getting ready to ask you like how you felt about that whole thing. I was like Tony Kirkendall had commented and had said that, and it's no, I totally, I totally think. Tommaso, yeah, even even if he's safe just for a run in, I mean, you, you can build that whole thing all the way to WrestleMania weekend. You know what I mean? Until he's actually cleared. And I want to say that's about the time he's, he should be cleared. So, Sounds about right. I mean, it. 
I don't think they're going to just give Gargano the belt, but at the same time, I don't see why they wouldn't. I mean, look at how they did uh, Galloway. A lot of guys didn't think he was on his way up. They thought, they thought he was going to be hanging out for a little longer, and if it wasn't for this injury, he would have been up on the main already. Yeah, that was unfortunate and very, very insane how that kind of turn of events happened. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's insane how much injury or just being in the wrong place at the wrong time or just... My opinion, um, I, I think I said it earlier on a post, that they, they just kind of work these guys too much. You know, Paige may have gotten hurt at a, a live event today. You know, just yeah, I heard about that. Too many events too soon throughout the week. I, I know they, they love the fans. They, they, they want to make money at the same time. But, you know, they, they, they got flown out for 30-second backstage gimmicks. They're, they're working a lot of live show events and getting hurt. Um, I really feel for these guys sometimes. Yeah, a few, a few more, a few less live events a year would probably be best for these guys. I mean, considering that like a lot of them apparently aren't selling that well, what's the point of having them in like the three surrounding cities of where you're gonna have them all? You yeah. know, like do the one big next city to like say you're gonna do it in LA, have you know have one in Anaheim, you know, say you're gonna do SmackDown in San Diego, do a live show in Ontario. Right. You know, like, make it simple. Yeah. Don't have these guys work five nights a week, you know, with a, a with a day and a half rest at best. Yeah. I hope they get paid well because I, I couldn't even imagine doing any of that for a week because I've never had to have done any sort of severe, serious travel like that. That's... Oh, man. Yeah, I can, I can only imagine the wear and tear of the travel alone is... But, um, so uh, let's see here. Um, so overall, not that bad of an episode. Uh, like I said, uh, she's one of the greatest episodes I can remember in, in recent memory. Um, let me go into some final thoughts I had for some members of the RWC family here. Just uh, I think we had a question about some of the, the, the two big men in the main event. Uh, I think we were comparing Killian Dane and, and Lars Sullivan, they kind of put on a showcase of what they could do in this match. I wouldn't mind seeing them get pieced off in their own right. Um, if you had to choose one to go over in a match, who would you choose? I'm still sticking with Killian Dane. I mean, I think, like, if it's booked that WWE way, it's going to be like Lars Sullivan in a one-on-one. -on -one. But I think Killian Dane is that guy who is he's ver the, thing, the thing that makes him scary is he's versatile. Like, he can be a strong man, but he can be athletic. He can be technical, but he can also be, you know, ruthless and, ruthless and aggressive. So, I mean, I love Lars. I, his gimmick is awesome. I like where he's going, but I think he's a little too green. And, you know, and the, the only way to test a monster is, you know, to put him up another against another monster. So. Yeah, um... I, I agree with you there with that question uh, asked by uh, Emir there and the uh, feedback we got. Um, I'm going to go with Dane for sure just because of the versatility. Um, Lars, very, very new at this point. Um, the fact that I don't know much about him is exciting. He can kind of produce some unknown things that we haven't seen before and really shock a lot of us. But what I have seen thus far hasn't been bad, not anything to really complain about, so I can't wait to see him get, you know, the spotlight he seems to be getting, but um, right now, Killian Dane, you know, hands down. And a question you asked yourself, um, I am not going to know how to answer this final question here, kind of a big one here. Um, as far as a better worker, Johnny Gargano or Aleister Black? Good lord, how, where do I even start? I don't even know how to dissect that one. That's Got to get down to like pure science on that one. Uh, how would you start to <laughs> figure that one out? Well, I mean, because my whole thing is, is, I, is I've seen them both in and outside of WWE rings um, to see Aleister Black and Tommy in, you know, uh, wrestling promotions like ICW and WCPW uh, to watch Gargano wrestle in, you know, like Ring of Honor and stuff. These guys are they're just so good. 
and I'm probably going to get some guff from this. I'm a huge Gargano fan, and this is probably why I'm leaning that way. But I think Gargano is a better worker than Aleister Black, and, and, and not by much, though. Not by much. If, if it was like, it would be like 1A, 1B if I really could. But I mean, if, if I have to pick one, I, I'm going with Gargano. Yeah, um, no, not a, jeez, if you, you chose one or the other, anybody out there, I wouldn't, you know, call anybody wrong. It's, you know, just a matter of preference. But, you know, just judging myself, if I, you know, had the, the balls to do that, I would um, also go with um, Johnny Gargano, um, you know, just his ability to do so much more in the ring, um, or at least I, I've seen him do so much more. Um, my exposure to any of these guys have just kind of been what they've done under, you know, the WWE banner. So it might be a little unfair to them because I know they might kind of get, you know, handcuffs put on them a little bit. But he, he's just my favorite out of the two of them. Um, just his ability to, to tell stories and just, I cannot wait to see these promos that Zelina and Andrade are going to cut on Johnny with just how unfortunate and unsuccessful and, and small and how much of a chance he, he doesn't have. I think it's going to be a great story. And um, I think it all kind of fits into how he wrestles a match. He can wrestle a real sympathetic match and have you feel real bad for him when he gets beat up. And, um, you know, that range along with his ability just is a smidgen more of what I get out of um, Aleister Black at this point. So um, that would be my my reason for, for choosing him there. But um, I'm lucky because they're both down here in NXT and I get to review it every week. So <laughs> these hard decisions are... <laughs> they're not that hard. They're um, you know quite enjoy enjoyable to kind of to see and um, I didn't have this platform back when Finn and, and Shinsuke and, and Joe were you know the top dogs in NXT but um, looking back you know if I had a more detailed look at their reigns I'm sure um, I would have you know had a little bit more appreciation for them like I do for all these guys down here right now so um, yeah they were definitely the top dogs for sure when they were there. So, um, any, um, anything, you know, just, uh, before we wrap up the show here, just, uh, actually, uh, I do got a question for you. I've been, I've been killing myself with these questions, asking every wrestling fan I can. Yeah, go ahead. Since, since you do, since you review strictly NXT, I know you probably watch the product. You know, as often as you can, but I know NXT is your baby, for lack of better words. Give me five guys. If you could have, if you could set five guys from NXT to put them in the Rumble, they don't have to stay on the main. Just give me five guys you would want to see in the Rumble. Okay, jeez. Okay, um, you got to put Alistair Black in there. Um, I think there's a lot of guys up there on the main show he could kind of cross paths with kind of you know give you some some what ifs you know imagine him facing off against you know seth rollins in the middle of the ring just kind of having to stare off that would be a great match to see that would be a great match. you know officer black and seth rollins um oh boy um second person just for selfish reasons <laughs> i'd put a velveteen dream in there um I think he could be a dark horse that could really kind of go. I think he'd be a person who, who'd last for a while, kind of in the corner, just kind of waiting it out. Um, I think he could kind of have some nice psych out moments with this gimmick with, with some people on the main show. Um, God, I'd love to see him kind of make a kissy face at John Cena and have Cena be like, what the, the, hell, is, the hell is this? That would be great. <laughs> That would be great. Or um, see him try to out weird gold dust for a few moments. That'd be that'd be really funny. I think um, that yeah, that would definitely be one of the funnier spots of the Rumble. <laughs> um, Adam Cole, 
uh, throw him in there, uh, have him face off with Fen, have him face off with, you know, um, geez, I don't really know much of these, uh, the bloodlines or the family trees go with the, the Bullet Club, but would an Adam Cole, Finn Balor face off do anything for the crowd? With is that I think are they related huge, at all? I think I think Adam Cole would get a huge pop to begin with, and then if you had that matchup, just even a stare down would get a giant pop. Right. Okay. Um, and it's God. I wish I could include AJ in there with any of these guys, but you know he's probably not going to work the Rumble because they better not <laughs> take that title off of him. Keep yeah, it snug. It'd be really dumb to have him work the Rumble, <laughs> not being champion. And for some dumb reason, don't take the freaking belt off him. Yeah. It looks like they're going to give Jindu the U.S. title. Uh, okay. But they, they, this is not the WWE title, so I'll take it. Yeah. Okay, so who's that? That's, uh, that's, is that two? I got... That's three. That's three. I got Cole, Black, and I got... Okay. So, let's see, who else would I put in there? Gosh, I feel like I'm missing a big name. People are just screaming at me right now. Uh, let's put um, let's put Gargano in there. I feel like he has a good enough following, you know, just to see Johnny Wrestling pop up on the Titan Tron. It would really excite a lot of people. Um, it's it's Philly. It, they're a smart wrestling oh, city. Yeah. It's you know night before, um, night after takeover. Excuse me. Everyone would just pop huge for Johnny Wrestling. He could do a lot of phenomenal things on his own, no matter who he's matched up with in that match. Um, final yeah, competitor. That'd be great. Final guy. Gosh, I feel like this is going to be a throwaway. Um, I'm going to go... Jeez, and this kind of makes me realize that they have not a lot of names down in NXT. Uh, I think I'd go with uh, Eric Young. I think I'd throw him in nice. there. Um, I think um, I'd have him do the entrance. I think I'd have him come down with, you know, his his crew. You know, maybe face off against, you know, one of the other spooky dudes. You know, that's what I call the the scary gimmick in WWE, <laughs> the spooky dude, you know, the Bray Wyatt, Finn Balor, egos. <laughs> um, yeah, spooky guy. So I'd I, I put him in there. Um, you know, he's a great worker, um, been around a long time. I'm sure he'd love to add being in the Rumble just to the list of things he's done. So a uh, long-winded answer there, but uh, <laughs> there's my, my five uh, NXT talents. So... Um, yeah, um, let's see here. Before I hop off here, I'll, I'll ask you one question here. We were at uh, about 58 minutes. Might as well make it an even hour. <laughs> <laughs> Special holiday 1XC episode here. Um, so on SmackDown, you know, you do have this um, a lot of superstars that can get pulled from your women's roster to kind of be in the Rumble. Who's taking it? Who's taking the women's war rumble? I don't think it's gonna be a SmackDown uh, person. I think it's I think it's gonna be Raw and I think it's gonna be Oscar. I think she's gonna win, and I think she's gonna challenge Charlotte. And and if and, and and here's my thing because I know they keep everybody keeps talking about Ronda, it's Ronda, 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 Ronda. Yeah. Here's the thing: Ronda can get overpowered, just like the Big Show used to. Just like Kane used to, and she could be thrown out. I think that they need a full-time wrestler to win this thing. I think Ronda would be great notoriety. She'd be a great pop factor, but there's no reason to really have her win it if she's as green as she is. That would be like giving 